Video games. We all know what they're for. For us to play and be entertained. Now while that is the goal of most video games, not all of them turn out that good and in fact, some of them might not even be worth the value that we paid for. Which is where you will do two things in this case to see whether it's worth your money or not. One of them is to watch a video game review and see how it is, or when possible, play the demo and see for yourself. Now since I do my own video game reviews, all that's left to do is a demo's impression. I'm WizWorld 100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewers, so let's get started. Now the demo I'm going to be checking out is Rogue Legacy on PC. Recently, I've generated an interest in this game for quite a while, and after watching some gameplay footage from RU Gaming, which I would say go check out as they have some entertaining video game playthroughs, I was more convinced to check the game out. Anyways, the game looked like something I would enjoy, so I went to see how much the game is and found that it was $15. More if you're Canadian, which didn't help its case. Going to be honest, the price kind of pushed me away. But fortunately, there is a demo of an early version of the game that you can download to play, which is what I did. Rogue Legacy is a 2D Metroidvania game where you explore a randomly generated dungeon, collecting loot, killing enemies, finding new items, and fighting bosses. Now, the game is called Rogue Legacy for a reason. The reason for that is that the characters you play only have one life, and when they die, it's game over, and it's onto their next legacy to complete the task that the previous generation wasn't able to do. You play as different types of class like knights, magicians, and etc. that affect your attributes, although you don't get to choose which class you get to play as to change things up, and they may or may not be better than the previous character you were using. They always have a big sword to use as their main weapon for the entire playthrough of your game. Sub-weapons that are like the sub-weapons in the Castlevania games that use MP, and special unique traits randomly given to the next heir that can be helpful or detrimental to you, such as being a midget who can go into areas that other characters can't reach to get treasure, both the downside of having the shortest reach which makes combat a lot tougher than it should be. No! You can also upgrade your next character once your previous character dies, provided you have enough money from your looting to pay for them in the castle, which acts as a skill tree. Now what they did to level your character up is very nice as you don't need to grind for XP like in the Castlevania RPG games, and whatever upgrades you get stays with you forever. You can also use the money to buy armor, weapons, and magic runes for enhancements such as dashing or air jumping to name a few. Now every time you enter into the dungeon, you have to pay death all your money in order to pass through, and the dungeons randomize. You can prevent the randomization by talking to the architect who will lock down the dungeon at the cost of all the loot you find being only at 50%. Which sounds unbeneficial, but this feature lets you try and grab treasure chests as you missed or might not have been able to collect with the previous characters. So pros and cons. Now since the demo is an early build and such, most of the features and content in the full game is not present and or taken out being the demo that it is, which is fine. Now despite that being the case, I still had a lot of fun with the demo, going through the dungeon, dying repeatedly to get gold and reaching the boss, yeah the gameplay is fun even if there are a few minor glitches that cheat me out of grabbing gold. And it's funny with the traits affecting gameplay, and as for the game being difficult, it's more like it's easy to die quickly than it is being naturally hard. I mean, one slip up and you can easily lose 90% of your health, which I don't really consider hard. The fact that it also depends on your level versus the enemy level and your smart playing skills will determine if it is truly difficult for you. I also highly recommend playing with a controller since it feels the most natural. The game's pixel graphics look great, reminding me of all the Metroidvania Castlevania games except the game randomizes each time if you let it, which is what I think future Metroidvania games should do for replay value. The game sounds okay, I mean this is the demo so there isn't much music to listen to unless you randomly find the music box room. I definitely recommend getting the demo to play as it still shows off a lot of content for a demo in my opinion. I mean, when I played the game again to record for this video I found new stuff that I didn't find in my previous playthrough, which is really cool. <laughs> this plays, I was wondering if I was gonna find it. This demo is very replayable until you defeat the boss, which pretty much ends the demo, but you can still keep playing to collect gold for upgrades and finding the special rooms that you might have missed. Overall, I am impressed by the demo and I wanted more, so I went and bought the full game. There is also the console versions, with the PlayStation 3 version having cross-play and cross-buy so you can buy it on your PS3 and then play it on your Vita and PS4, which sounds pretty decent for $16.99. Now the question for Rogue Legacy is, is it worth it? Now I've only beaten half the game so I can't give my full thoughts on this yet, but what I can say is that so far, for the most part, yeah, it is kind of worth it, and I am having fun playing it. There are still things in the game that I think they could have improved or fixed. Like for example, I would prefer if the camera would look down when you're crawling. 
The hit detection is still a little iffy, the lack of variety with the runes you find, the coins still manage to get stuck somehow in the walls, maybe have the ability to sell items you find in the dungeon to get money, and instead of weapon schematics, what if you found special ores that you bring back to the blacksmith to craft special or custom weapons, or hey, maybe combine the two. But for now, it is starting to feel like it's worth the $17 I paid for, including the tax, but I still would have liked to get it on sale. So, until I beat the game and see, is it worth it? This is Wizware 100 you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more than you can see here, be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates on reviews and videos. And if you want to help me out, I have a Patreon account, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my Lazy Work Legion for more video game content for you to watch. Such as the videos I'm showcasing right now. Be sure to give a like and comment for feedback and check out my site LazyWorks Creations and River City Gamers for more content like mine. Such as today's video recommendations is... Are You Gaming's Flog Sucks at Rogue Legacy video from the Freedom Network. If it wasn't for that video, I probably wouldn't have looked into Rogue Legacy some more. So thanks for making that video and getting me interested in it. Links to all that goodness is right in the description or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube.